Good morning. I'm going to try doing something a little different today. Um, let's turn on the light here. Okay. Um, normally I'm looking out at my lake, but uh, just let the natural light flow in. But for this, I need my light. So I printed out an article <clears throat> from the New York Times website yesterday, and uh, I just wanted to go over this article. I'm going to read it to you. I'm not really sure what I'm going to call this video, but maybe I'll start a new series of reading articles. Uh, I know other alt writers and people like that have done similar such things, but... <clears throat> So I'm going to read an article from a Mr. Charles M. Blow, and no, I'm not making that name up. Charles Blow. <clears throat> okay, so this is from the opinion pages. And you know what? It, it kind of, honestly, it pisses me off. As someone who was never given a fair shake at uh, writing in general and... Um, various positions I'd applied to and stuff. It kind of pisses me off that people like this just get to, you know, I mean, I'm glad they have their position or whatever and they get to live their cushy life writing their opinions, but you know how much money I'm getting from what you're listening to right now, right? <laughs> and no, I'm not going to start a Patreon. <laughs> if anything, if I start a Patreon, I should find a way of, like, giving the listener money because... Appreciate your listen. This might be a multiple parter, I don't know. But it's not very long, so let me get started. Uh, and I will be commenting uh, during my reading of this. Um, so, here, one second, I'll be here. You know what I had to do? Uh, I had to take away my dog's water bottle because for some reason whenever I'm recording a video, my dog just drinks uh, non-stop from his water bottle. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe he views that as like a green light, like I'm, I don't know. I'll put it back right after I'm done recording. Okay, so, this article from the New York Times from the 3rd, I guess, or at least that's the date on the sheet of paper. Let's see, is that the date I printed it? Let me see. That's the date I printed it. I don't... Oh, wait, it's from February 29th. Okay. <clears throat> Charles Blow. It's called, in quote, I'm not a super predator. Hmm. What could this be? All right, here we go. Days before Hillary Clinton thundered to an overwhelming victory over rival Bernie Sanders in South Carolina, largely on the strength of black voters who supported her by an even higher percentage than they supported Barack Obama within 2008, a young, proudly queer black activist, Ashley Williams, was in Charlotte, North Carolina, plotting an action that would make a statement of its own. So right off the bat, you have a, a black activist named Ashley Williams. You know what? Let me give Ashley Williams some credit for not having, like, a, a Shaniqua-type name or something. At least she has, like, a normal name, and uh, I'll give her credit for that. But, of course, she's a, a queer activist. <clears throat> <clears throat> Aren't they all? I mean, if you're queer, you're pretty much an activist. Or if you're an activist, you're queer by default, right? So, nonetheless, that automatically rubs me the wrong way. Um, she was planning to attend a private Clinton fundraiser in Charleston, South Carolina, and confront the candidate about her support of policies, specifically the 1994 crime bill that contributed to the explosion of racially tilted mass incarceration in this country. So, we have, um, 
she's going to try to grill Hillary Clinton on uh, things that Clinton said in 1994, uh, which, of course, she's going to say is leading to the mass incarceration of black people. Um, let's not pay attention at all to why these people might be put into prison. Let's just focus on their victimization by skin color. Bullshit. All right, let's continue. Williams and her friends decided to make a sign, but what to put on it? They toyed with phrases from a now infamous speech Clinton gave in 1996 when the 23-year-old Williams was a toddler, in which Clinton said, We need to take these people on. They are often connected to big drug cartels. They are not just gangs of kids anymore. They are often the kinds of kids that are called super predators. No conscience. No empathy. We can talk about why they ended up that way, but first we have to bring them to heal. End quote. So before I flip to the next page, let me uh, just take a look at something here. Uh, so Williams, this Ashley Williams was a toddler when this happened. Uh, you know, so I think that's important for all these these people. You understand these activists have no life experience, like they raised in a bubble, they <clears throat> told to be upset, and they're told to be upset while they're, you know, eating at Chipotle and going to Starbucks and buried in their smartphones, and you know what, I just don't feel that sorry for them, so let's continue on. Okay, let's turn this page. They settled on a phrase. And over a couple of hours, they blocked out the letters on a pillowcase. Williams practiced in a bathroom mirror, folding the banner into her bra and whipping it out. She figured that she'd have to hide it on her body so that it wouldn't be confiscated before she revealed it at the fundraiser. But it was too thick, so she cut away the back half that had no writing. Perfect. That night, or the night of the event, she nervously made her way through security with her secret banner hidden away and took up position near where she assumed Clinton was to speak. As soon as Clinton descended the stairs of the mansion, took the microphone and began her remarks, Williams turned to the crowd and unfurled her banner. Then she turned to Clinton, who was confronted with her own worst words. With her own worst words, I guess, huh? We have to bring them to heal, end quote. On the video of the encounter recorded by a friend of Williams, okay, note, note that she has a friend recording this. It's, it's an important thing to note. Uh, on the video of the encounter recorded by a friend of Williams who accompanied her to the event, after all, in this age, an action without a video is like a tree falling in the forest with nobody around to hear it. An exchange follows. Williams says, We want to apologize uh, we, we want you to apologize for mass incarceration. Clinton says, okay, we'll talk about Williams interrupts, I guess, or something, because Clinton doesn't finish her sentence. Williams says, I'm not a super predator, Hillary Clinton. What is wrong with these people? I mean, just... <laughs> this is just unbelievable. I mean, seriously, like, if this person could spend, like, one day in, like, like, 1850s or something, like, they would just, and then they could instantly come back to today, they would just, they'd have, they'd be like, you know what, we have it so great, this is wonderful, let's make the most of our opportunities. Anyway, <clears throat> Clinton, obviously caught off guard, struggles to find an appropriate response as Williams continues to pressure her and the crowd begins to grumble. That's inappropriate. And the Secret Service closes in on Williams. No, so there's a quote, that's inappropriate. Um, I assume that's the crowd grumbling, or maybe that's Clinton saying that. I don't know. I saw the video, <clears throat> and Clinton seemed to be pretty smooth about it, honestly. Um, then Clinton says something about answering for her statement in mass incarceration in general that left me flabbergasted. 
me being Charles Blow, our good Charles Blow. Quote, You know what? Nobody's ever asked me before. You're the first person to ask me, and I'm happy to address it. But you are the first person to ask me, dear. Calling her dear. So nice. I don't think that's going to win you any votes. From... Actually, it might. Who knows? Blow continues his article. Could this be true? How was this possible? How is it that all of the black audiences she has... How is it that all of the black audiences she has been before in the interceding two decades and all the black relationships she has cultivated, no one person ever asked her what this young graduate student was asking? Okay, so let me stop right there and just say that not only is this 23-year-old lesbian, black lesbian activist, uh, I mean, she's, she's a, at this point, she's more highly educated than I am, and uh, I can tell you that I, I could have continued my education, but I chose not to because it would just incur further debt. It would force me down a certain career path that probably wouldn't exist, to be quite honest. And, uh, you know, you can say I'm making excuses for myself, fine, but you know what, I'd rather, I'm intellectual enough to uh, make achievements on my own, um, and if my merit doesn't uh, justify uh, me as an academic, that's okay. I don't need another sheet of paper. <clears throat> but regardless, this person's a graduate student, so this is supposed to be a smart cookie, right? Unless she figured out how to cut off the back half of a pillow. I guess that's worth a graduate degree. Hmm. I need to start making iced coffee. At least avoiding making it. The extra steps, you know. Back to the article. And this probably will be a two-parter because, um, yeah, about 12 minutes. Okay. Uh, so, let me read the last sentence I already read. Uh, how is it that all the, that of all the black audiences she has been before in the interceding two decades, and all the black relationships she has cultivated, no one person ever asked her what this young graduate student was asking? In that moment, I knew that the people of my generation had failed the people of Williams's. And uh, I don't know. I'm just criticizing this guy's writing. I think Williams, you might just be able to end with an apostrophe and not apostrophe yes, but Williams's, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. But it'd be funny if I'm right and this guy's writing for the New York Times. <clears throat> anyway. Um, in that moment, I knew that the people of my generation had failed the people of Williams's. Her whole life has borne the bruises of what was done largely by Democrats when I was the age she is now. Oh, cry me a river, Charles Blow. Okay. She said she has grown up knowing families and whole communities devastated by vanishing black people swept away into a criminal justice system that pathologized their very personage. That night, Williams forced a reckoning. Oh, oh my God, shoot me right now. Ugh. You know what, if people from... First of all, your communities are probably better because these people aren't in them. I mean, if you want criminals all over your community, apparently, in, like, like it's the vanishing or something like that, that TV show that I didn't watch or whatever. Um, you really want these people like, oh, well, they break into your home, so we're just pathologizing these people. They're dealing drugs. We're just pathologizing them. We're being racist. You know? <laughs> and what kind of world, these dream world these people are living in? Mm, closing in on 15 minutes already. Now, I don't know if this is pleasant to listen to at all, because I'm really breaking up the article, but uh, I'm going to make this two parts, so thanks for listening thus far, and um, I'll see you in part two.